Good morning students. We are learning on Railway and Airport Engineering. We are discussing on Railway Engineering uh, wherein in the previous lecture we have discussed about some of the defects of rails and creep of rails. Yes. In today's session we will discuss about different rail joints and the wheeling of rails. So starting with the rail joints well, rail joints are necessary to hold together the adjoining ends of the rails in the correct position to ensure the continuity of the rail sections. While well, joints form the weakest part of the track, it is observed that the strength of rail joints is only 50% of the strength of a rail. While a gap of 6 to 15 mm is usually kept between the adjoining rails to allow for the expansion of the rail. While sleepers are placed at closer spacing at the rail joints for more stability of the track. While modern track is required, while modern track is required to meet higher speed and excel loads. Therefore, the minimum joints should be provided by wailing the rails for long length of 1 km and over. Okay, so that's why in this lecture we will also discuss about this wailing of rails. Well, first of all, let's see what are the requirements of an ideal joints. Well, the rail joint should be as strong as the rail. It should be capable of maintaining the two rails at the same level. It should be capable of withstanding the lateral force and also it should maintain the gauge distance of the track. The joint should provide enough space for expansion and contraction, okay, uh, so that at the time of uh, temperature variation and temperature changes, it allows uh, that expansion and contraction for that rails well it should be able to absorb the vibration and shock due to the moving loads well it should be so simple and it should be capable of being readily removable by subvertagers it should facilitate easy removal and replacement of rails without disturbing the whole track uh, with that also, it should be cheap and durable. Okay, so these are some of the requirements of ideal joints. Well, using the maximum number of joints will bring us towards its disadvantage, such as uh, rail joints form the weakest part of the track. Okay, because more number of joints, that means there will be a more number of chance of buckling of track or the deformation of the track. Okay, with that also it creates more wear and tear to the rails. It also increases the maintenance cost that if we provide the maximum number of joints, it will uh, lead to the maximum use of fastenings and fixtures. Okay, so the requirement of those fastenings and fixtures would be more than uh, if the gap between those two rails uh, is more than it will be uncomfortable to the passengers during the journey. Okay, so these are the some of the disadvantage also to use the maximum number of joints. Well, discussing about the functions of joints. So the function of joint is to maintain the two rails at the same level, to maintain the gauge distance uh, between these two rails, also to resist the lateral force acting on the rails also to absorb the shocks and vibrations with that also to allow for free expansion and contraction of the rails in the weather changes or the temperature change so these five are the functions of joints now there are uh, different joints that we provide in the rail sections so let's see what are the types of rail joints well according to the position of the sleepers we have three different types the first one that is the supported joints. When the rail ends raised on a single sleeper, 
that is called as the joint sleeper okay and it is termed as the supported joints so it was expected that the supporting joint would reduce the wear and tear of the rails as there would be no cantilever action well uh, in practice however the support tends to slightly raise the height of the rail ends as such the run on the supported joint is normally hard that is also uh, seen some wear and tear of sleeper at the supporting end of the joint so in this figure you can see here a uh, supported joint is being bloated while the next section that is the suspended joint well when the rail ends are projected beyond the sleepers that is called a shoulder sleeper okay and such kind of joints is termed as the suspended joints well as a result of cantilever action the packing under the sleepers of joint becomes loose due to the hammering action of the moving train loads and these types of joints are the most common type of joint on the indian and foreign railways okay well the third one that is the bridge joint well when the rail ends are projected beyond sleepers as in case of suspended joints they are connected by the means of metal flat or corrugated plate the joint is termed as the bridge joint well these are uh, very rarely or you know it is probably not uh, under the practical use okay now the next that is the type of rail joints according to the position of the joints well those are the square joints well in the square joints the joint in the rail are exactly opposite to the joint in another rail and this type of joint is commonly used for the indian railways the second one that is the staggered joint while in the staggered joint the joints in one rail are staggered and are not opposite to the joints in the other rail while staggered joints are normally preferred on the curved tracks because they face the centrifugal force that pushes the track in the outward direction okay so these are the type of joint according to the position that is the that is the square joint and staggered joint now let's discuss about the welding of rails well a rail joint is the weakest link in the railway track and a railway track with joints which requires about 30% of extra maintenance work as compared to the plain track well the best remedy for the problems those caused by the rail joints lies in the welding of the rails and it reducing the number of joints to the possible extent and that's why probably we provide the welding of rails while now discussing about the purpose of welding of rails is to increase the length of the rail by joining two or more rails and thus to reduce the number of joints then to reduce the requirements of fish plates which leads to the economy and strength to repair the worn out rails or damaged rails and thus it increase the life of the rails to increase the stability of the track to reduce the creep of rails and wearing of the rails to build up the worn out points and rails on the sharp curves so these are some of the prime function of welding of rails now let's discuss about some of the advantage of welding of rails well it satisfy the condition of a perfect joint and hence it increases the life of the rail it reduces the maintenance cost by about 20 to 30% with that it reduce the creep of the rails expansion effect due to the temperature can be reduced uh, which in turn also reduce the creep 
while welding of rails decrease in wear of the rails while it also dilute the intensity of high frequency vibration due to the moving loads the defects such as a hammering at rail joints disturbance in the alignments can be eliminated while the welding facilitates track circuiting on electric fired tracks welded rails give better performance on the long bridges well as the number of joints reduce the cost of track construction will also reduce so these are some of the advantage of welding of rails now what type of welds we do on the rails well uh, in a present scenario in indian railway uh, we probably used to provide uh, long welded rail short welded rail and continuous welded rails while discussing about all of them the first is long welded rails well long welded rail is one whose central part does not undergo any longitudinal movement and only end portions are affected due to the temperature variation normally a rail with a length greater than 250 meter on the broad gauge and 500 meter on the meter gauge will function as long welded rail while the maximum length of long welded rail is prescribed as 1000 meter under the indian condition that means through the 1000 meter we can provide a single section a single rail section with the welded connections the next that is the short welded rail well a short welded rail is one which contracts or expands throughout its length due to the temperature variation while these rails are welded into 3 5 or 10 rail length to make the short welded rail that means three section into 13 meter for broad gauge and three section for 12 meter into meter gauge have been standardized for the indian railways while the continuous welded rail is a type of uh, you know uh, long welded rails that continues through the station yard including the points and crossings so these are some type of welded rails that we use for the indian railway i hope students you understand this topic properly that is joints of rails and this welding of rails thank you so much for your kind attention i will see you in the next lecture